What is up everyone, my name is Joseph and welcome back to Casually Competitive MTG where it's our goal to bring you semi-competitive EDH gameplay content that's both fast paced and entertaining. In today's match for the first episode of Season 2, we decided to change it up a little bit and play some commanders that haven't been seen on the channel yet and in general probably see a lot less play. We are experimenting with the commander choice for Season 2, so let us know what you think of the commander choices as the season progresses. That being said, before we get into the opening hands, let's go over the channel promotions that we have for you today. First off, if you do want to help support us financially, help us improve the quality of these videos, we have both a Patreon and a YouTube join button available, so go ahead and check those out if you're interested. We believe the reward tier systems are set up in a way that we think you'll enjoy. Next up, if you're going to be buying cards in the near future, use our TCG affiliate link. By clicking the link below or any of the deck lists future purchases you make on TCG Player, help us out with no cost to you. Lastly, if you want to talk to us or if you just want to join the community, we have a public Discord available. Link is in the description. With that all being said, let's get into the opening hands and the deck introductions. Going first in the first game today, we have Nate playing Lord Windgrace. This deck looks to get value off of his commander and value off of high priority reanimation targets, all while assembling his somewhat spicy combo. The main combo in this deck is having Bone Miser and Greater Good on the battlefield, and then sacrificing the zombies from Bone Miser in order to draw two cards, discard three, and then creating extra zombies, generating mana, and drawing extra cards with the Bone Miser. This is helped by something like a Gitrog on the battlefield, but with the creature density in this deck, it generally allows him to loot through his entire deck, or at the very least milling himself, allowing him to win with all the mana he's generated. His opening hand contained an overgrown tomb, a mountain, a swamp, a dunes of the dead, a gamble, a bloom tender, and a bone miser. Going second, we have Joseph playing Niv Mizzet Perun. This deck is pretty straightforward. You play Niv Mizzet, you play an effect like Curiosity, and then you play any instant or sorcery. When that spell is cast, you draw a card off of Niv Mizzet, deal one damage from Niv Mizzet's ability, and then Curiosity triggers, allowing you to draw another one, continuing this loop to kill the table. His opening hand contained an Island, a Mystic Sanctuary, a Cascade Bluffs, a Curiosity, a Rolling Earthquake, an Impulse, and a Captain Lannery Storm. Up next, we have Adam playing Queen Marchesa. This Mardu build looks to get value off of being the Monarch and keeping the board clear with Death Touch creatures and some control pieces to put together either a Kikijiki Zealous Conscripts combo or Solemnity, a Sack Outlet, and an Undying creature to get infinite ETBs and LTBs. His opening hand contained a Plains, an Isolated Chapel, a Mountain, a Swamp, a Rakdo Signet, an Arcane Signet, and a Mortify. And finally, going last, we have Jordan playing Nekusar the Mind Razor. The goal of this deck is to play Nekusar, wheel his opponents to not only deal damage to them, but also to look for either his Notion Thief to deny the card draw off of the future wheels, something like a Waste Knot to get the value from the wheels, or just finding the Demonic Consultation Thassa's Oracle Win Con. The play style of this deck is pretty similar to what a three-color Opus Thief would be. Jordan's opening hand contains a mountain, a luxury suite, an ancient tomb, a library of Lang, a burning inquiry, a wheel of fortune, and due to the London Mulligan, he puts a windfall to the bottom of his library. Now with the opening hands and the deck introductions out of the way, let's get into the gameplay. Nate starts us off in this game by drawing, playing a mountain as his land for turn, and then tapping that mountain to cast a gamble. He searches up a card to his hand and then discards a dark confident at random. With nothing left, he gives the turn to Joseph. Joseph draws, and plays a tapped Mystic Sanctuary as his land for turn, and then decides to give the turn to Adam. Adam draws, and plays a tapped Isolated Chapel, passing the turn to Jordan. On his turn, Jordan draws, and plays an Ancient Tomb as his land for turn, tapping it, paying 2 life, to cast a Talisman of Dominance. He then taps the Talisman of Dominance for a Colorless to cast a Library of Lang. With nothing left, he gives the turn to Nate. Nate untaps, draws, and shocks in an overgrown tomb, paying 2 life. He then taps for 2 mana to cast a Bloom Tender. With nothing left, he gives the turn to Joseph. Joseph untaps, draws, and plays a Command Tower as his land for turn. He then taps both his lands to cast a Talisman of Creativity. With nothing left, he gives the turn to Adam. Adam untaps, draws, and plays a Mountain as his land for turn, and then taps both of his lands to cast a Rakdos Signet. With nothing left to do, he passes the turn to Jordan. Jordan untaps, draws, and plays an untapped Luxury Suite as his land for turn. He then taps for 3 mana 
to cast a Wheel of Fortune. There are no responses, and everyone then discards their hand and then draws seven cards. Due to Library of Lang being on the battlefield, Jordan decides to put two of his cards back on the top of his library. Jordan then taps for one mana to cast a Soul Ring. He then taps the Soul Ring to cast an Is It Signet. With his turn two finally completed, he passes the turn to Nate. Nate untaps, draws, and plays a Graven Carnes as his land for turn. He then taps for one black mana to cast a Reanimate, targeting the Bone Miser in his graveyard. The Reanimate resolves, Bone Miser enters the battlefield, and Nate then takes 5 damage. He then taps for 2 mana to cast a Knight's Whisper, drawing 2 cards and losing 2 life. He then taps for 2 mana to cast a Nature's Lore, searching a stomping grounds to the battlefield, paying 2 life to have it enter untapped. With nothing left, he gives the turn to Joseph. Joseph untaps, draws, and plays a Mana Confluence as his land for turn. He then, for zero mana, casts a Mana Crypt. He then taps for one blue mana to cast a Preordain, scrying two cards, leaving one on top, and then drawing that card. He then taps for two mana to cast a Baral, Chief of Compliance. He then taps for one blue mana to cast a Mystic Remora. The Mystic Remora resolves, and Joseph passes the turn to Adam. Adam untaps, draws, and plays an Exotic Orchard as his land for turn. He then, for zero mana, casts his very own Mana Crypt. He does not pay the four extra, and Joseph draws a card off of Mystic Remora. He then taps for six mana to cast a By Force, X equaling five, targeting three of Jordan's artifacts and Joseph's two. He is not able to pay the four extra for Mystic Remora, so Joseph draws a card. Jordan and Nate both pass priority, and Joseph, not wanting to get set turns back by losing his needed ramp, exiles Pongify and pays one life to cast a Force of Will without paying its mana cost, countering the by force. When the counter resolves, Joseph draws one card and discards a card with Baral's ability, and with his plan stopped, Adam passes the turn to Jordan. Jordan untaps, draws, and plays a Polluted Delta as his land for turn. He then taps his mana to cast his commander Nekusar the Mind Razor. It resolves, and he then pays one life to crack his Polluted Delta, shocking in a Steam Vents, losing two more life. He then taps for one red mana to cast a Burning Inquiry. He does not pay the four extra for Mystic Remora, and Joseph then draws a card, taking one damage from Nekusar. The Burning Inquiry then resolves, and everybody draws three cards, and Jordan's opponents each lose three life from drawing those cards. Everybody then discards three cards at random, and due to the discards, Nate draws three cards from the Bone Miser triggers. Out of the three cards he discarded, Jordan decided to put one back on top of his library due to Library of Lang. Jordan then pays two life to tap his Ancient Tomb for two mana to cast a Sensei's Divining Top, not paying for Mystic Remora, and then uses the Floating Mana to activate Sensei's Divining Top, rearranging the top three cards of his library. With nothing left, he gives the turn to Nate. Nate untaps and in his draw step draws an additional card. He then loses two life to drawing two cards this turn, and then plays a forest as his land for turn. He then taps his mana to cast the Gitrog monster. When it resolves, he plays his second land for turn of Lighted Woodland. He then goes to his end step, and since he has eight cards in hand, discards a Chrome Mox, getting a draw trigger from Bone Miser. Now just so you know how this works, he does have to redo his cleanup step, so really anytime he discards a non-creature, he will be able to draw one more card, and then discard another since he'll have 8 cards in hand. So he does this, discarding a mana crypt, drawing one more card from Bone Miser. He then discards a land, drawing a card from Gitrog, and getting 2 floating black mana from Bone Miser. And then discards an explosive vegetation, drawing a card from Bone Miser. And then discards a Sky Shroud Claim, drawing another card from Bone Miser, taking another damage from Nekusar, and then going to his cleanup step one more time, discarding a Soul Ring, drawing another card, taking a damage, and then this time uses his floating black mana and taps for one red mana to cast a Terminate targeting Nekusar. It resolves, Nekusar is destroyed, Jordan elects to put him back into the command zone, and now with 7 cards in his hand, Nate is finally able to pass the turn to Joseph. Joseph untaps, and in his upkeep does not pay for Mr. Grimora, and it goes to his graveyard. Also in his upkeep, he loses his Mana Crypt flip, taking 3 damage. He then draws, and taps his Mana Crypt to cast a Soul Ring floating 1 colorless mana. He then taps the Soul Ring to help cast a Coalition Relic. He then plays an island as his land for turn, 
and taps for six mana to cast Niv-Mizzet Perun. It resolves, and he then pays two life to cast a Gataxian Probe targeting Nate. He draws a card from Niv-Mizzet on cast, and as he draws this card, deals one damage to Bloom Tender. Gataxian Probe then resolves, Joseph looks at Nate's hand, and then draws a card, dealing one more damage to Nate's face. With nothing left, Joseph gives the turn to Adam. Adam untaps and in his upkeep wins his mana crypt trigger, not taking any damage. He then draws and plays a Graven Karns as his land for turn. He then taps his mana to cast his commander Queen Marchesa, becoming the monarch as she enters the battlefield. He then taps for two mana to cast a Talisman of Conviction. He then goes to combat and swings his hasty commander at Nate who declares no blockers and takes 3 damage. Adam then goes to his end step and draws a card due to being the monarch. Jordan goes to his turn, untaps, draws, and then taps his sensei's divining top to draw a card and put the divining top back on top of his library. He then, for 0 mana, casts a mana crypt. He then taps for 7 mana to recast his commander, Nekusar, floating 1 colorless mana. He then taps for 2 mana to cast an Underworld Breach. When it resolves, he taps for 1 red mana to recast his Burning Inquiry, exiling 3 cards to cast it through Underworld Breach. When it's cast, Joseph draws a card from niv ability and deals 1 damage to Nekusar. Everybody then draws 3 cards, Jordan's opponents take 3 damage, Joseph pings Nekusar for 3 damage with niv killing Nekusar, and then everybody discards three cards at random. Nate, due to having both Bone Miser and Gitrog on the battlefield, ends up drawing three more cards, taking three more damage. And Jordan, due to having Library of Leng on the battlefield, decides to put one of his discards back on top of his library. The world's most confusing burning inquiry then finally resolves, and Jordan gives the turn to Nate. Nate untaps and, in his upkeep, sacrifices Blighted Woodlands to the Gitrog trigger and then draws a card when it hits the graveyard. He then draws a card for turn and then plays a Prismatic Vista as his land for turn and a Forest as his second land for turn. He immediately pays one life to crack Prismatic Vista, drawing a card from Gitrog when Prismatic Vista hits the graveyard and searching up another Forest to the battlefield. He then, for zero mana, casts a Lotus Petal. He then taps for 3 mana to cast an Eternal Witness. When it enters the battlefield, he returns Gamble from his graveyard to his hand. He then sacrifices his Lotus Petal to generate a red mana to cast this Gamble, and as it's cast, Joseph draws a card off of Niv-Mizzet and pings Nate for 1 damage. Nate then tutors up a card into his hand and discards a Chainer Nightmare Adept at random. Nate then taps his mana to cast a Greater Good. Knowing that Nate has the other combo pieces he needs, Joseph pays 0 mana to cast Pact of Negation, targeting the greater good. On cast, Joseph draws a card off of Niv-Mizzet, pinging Nate for one more damage, and then Pact resolves, countering the greater good. Joseph then draws a card and discards a card off of Baral's ability. Nate then goes to his end step and decides to do what he did last time, and discard a non-creature to draw a card and then continue to do this on his end step, continually going back to his cleanup step since he has more than 7 cards to look for an answer to save him. He does this process 14 times going 14 cards deep and just decides that there's really nothing he can find at this point and decides to then discard a creature to stop the loop, gets a 2-2 zombie from Bone Miser from a creature hitting the graveyard, and then decides to give the turn to Joseph. Joseph goes to his turn, untaps, and in his upkeep pays 5 mana to not lose the game from the Pact of Negation trigger. Also in his upkeep, he wins his Mana Crypt trigger, not taking any damage. He then draws and deals 1 more damage to Nate's face from the niv trigger. He then plays a Steam Vents as his land for turn, paying 2 life to have it enter untapped. He then taps for 3 mana to cast a Ristic Study. Ristic Study resolves, and Joseph then taps for 1 blue mana to cast a Merchant Scroll, since it's reduced by 1 due to Brawl's ability. He draws a card from niv Miza on cast, and then he searches up a Force of Negation to his hand, and then goes to combat and swings Baral at Adam and niv Miza at Nate. Neither declare any blockers, the damage goes through, Joseph becomes the Monarch, and Nate loses the game.
Joseph then goes to his end step and draws a card from being the monarch, dealing one damage to Jordan. Adam then goes to his turn, untaps, draws, and in his upkeep loses his mana crypt trigger, taking three damage. He then draws, plays a planes as his land for turn, he then taps for five mana to cast a zealous conscript. He does not pay the extra mana, so Joseph draws a card from Ristic Study, and then, not wanting to lose his niv mizzet Joseph taps for two blue mana to cast a mana drain targeting the zealous conscripts, and as it's cast, he draws a card, dealing one damage to Adam's face. In response to the mana drain, Adam taps for one white mana to cast a swords to plowshares targeting niv mizzet He does not pay the extra for Ristic Study, so Joseph draws a card from Ristic Study and from the niv mizzet trigger, and then deals two damage to Adam's face. And then in response to the swords, Joseph exiles a blue card from his hand in order to cast Misdirection without paying its mana cost, changing the target of swords from Niv Mizzet to Queen Marchesa. On cast of the Misdirection, he draws a card from Niv Mizzet, dealing one more damage to Adam. In response to the Misdirection, Adam taps his mana to cast D Spark, really wanting to get rid of this value engine for Joseph. On cast, Joseph draws another card from Niv-Mizzet and deals another damage to Adam. In response to the D-Spark, Joseph exiles another blue card from his hand in order to cast Force of Negation without paying its mana cost, targeting the D-Spark. On cast, Joseph draws a card and deals another damage to Adam, and then the Force of Negation resolves, countering the D-Spark. Queen Marchesa is then exiled from Swords to Plowshared, Adam gains 3 life, and he decides to put Queen Marchesa back in the command zone, and Mana Drain then counters the Zealous Conscripts. With nothing left to do and being all tapped out, Adam decides to give the turn to Jordan. Jordan untaps, and in his upkeep wins his Mana Crypt trigger, not taking any damage. He then taps for 1 mana to recast his Sensei's Divining Top, paying the extra mana for Ristic Study. He then taps for 2 mana to cast a Waste Knot, not paying the extra for Ristic Study, allowing Joseph to draw, and Joseph deals 1 damage to Jordan's face from the Ristic Study draw. Jordan then taps for 4 mana to cast Cast the Dissonant Mage, again not paying for Ristic Study, and Joseph draws a card and deals another damage to Jordan's face. Kest then resolves, and Jordan then replays his Wheel of Fortune from his graveyard, not paying for Ristic Study, allowing Joseph to draw from the Ristic Study and from Niv Mizzet, and Joseph deals 2 damage to Kess. The Wheel of Fortune then resolves, everybody discards their hand, and due to the discards, Jordan gets 8 black mana from Waste Knot, generates 8 more draws, and gets 1 zombie. Everyone then draws 7 cards, and Joseph decides to finish off Kess with 2 of the Niv Mizzet triggers, and then deals 5 more damage to Jordan. Jordan then plays a City of Brass as his land for turn. He then casts Chrome Mox, imprinting Mystic Remora. He then uses one of his floating black mana and taps the Chrome Mox for a blue to cast Snap, targeting Niv Mizzet. He uses another floating mana to pay for the Ristic Study, so Joseph only draws one card from Niv Mizzet and then deals one damage to Jordan's face and has no responses for Snap, and Niv Mizzet is returned to Joseph's hand. Jordan then untaps two lands. Jordan then uses another of his floating black mana to cast a Vampiric Tutor, not paying for the Ristic Study, allowing Joseph to draw. He tutors up a card to the top of his library and loses 2 life. He then pays 4 mana, paying the Ristic Study, to cast a Dark Deal. It resolves and everybody discards their hand and draws that many minus 1. From his opponent's discard, Jordan gets 3 zombies, 7 additional card draw, and 10 floating black mana. Jordan, due to Library of Lang being on the battlefield, decides to put 2 cards back on top of his library. Jordan then draws his cards, and then for 0 mana, casts a Mox Opal, not paying for Ristic Study. He then casts a Lotus Petal, again, not paying for Ristic Study. He then uses 5 mana, this time paying for Ristic Study, to cast a Whispering Madness. He holds priority and flashes out a Notion Thief in response. There are no responses to either of these spells, the Notion Thief resolves, and then the Whispering Madness resolves, having everyone discard their hand, and Jordan draws 36 cards. From the Waste Knot, he draws an additional 12 cards, gets 2 additional zombies, and 8 more floating black mana. 
As Whispering Madness resolves, he ciphers it onto the Notion Thief. He then taps for two blue mana to cast Athassa's Oracle, which resolves, and in response to the ETB effect, he uses two of his floating black mana to cast a Tainted Pact, exiling his library, and then the ETB effect from Thassa's Oracle resolves, and Jordan wins the game. Well, we hope you enjoyed game one of season two. We are going to head into just a second game. The first one is the one that will matter for the finale, but we thought you might want a little bit more content, so we decided to do a second game for this episode. I just want to do a really quick post-game recap to highlight some important cards and just to talk about the game for just a few seconds. First off, let's just really quickly go over the commanders, or at least the winning commander in this game. Nekusar is by far a inferior commander choice for a wheel archetype compared to an Opus Thief. However, we hope that this game showed you that even some of the more casual or less optimized commanders can still be built in a semi-competitive and semi-powerful way. The deck is still very strong and has a lot of good cards. It does suffer a little bit by missing out on one color and having a little bit less value from the command zone. However, decks can still be relatively semi-competitive, strong, and win early, even while having a little bit of variety and lower optimization on the commander choice, and that's really what we're trying to hone in on in Season 2, to show you that some of these commanders, while not the most optimal, can still be fun and powerful. So I just wanted to hit on that really quick. So now let's talk about what I would consider the most valuable card in this game, and it's gotta go to Waste Not. Waste Knot is what allowed Jordan to really propel himself into the win after the large counter or interaction battle between Adam and Joseph. He only had two cards in hand at that point, the Kess and the Waste Knot, so being able to play Kess, Waste Knot, and then basically flash back Wheel of Fortune and then continue to generate value off of that by getting mana and extra card draw really just gave him the win. Waste Knight is a fantastic 2-drop and honestly is a powerhouse in these types of decks. But that being said, I don't want to spend too much with the post-game recap because we do have a game 2 to get into, so let's end it there and let's head into game number 2. As exciting as that game was, I know you guys just want more EDH content, so we're going to give you a second game for this video. So let's just jump into the opening hands. Going first in this second game is Adam playing Queen Marchesa. His opening hand contains a Temple of Silence, an Isolated Chapel, two Swamps, a Plains, a Talisman of Hierarchy, and a Flayer of the Hatebound. Going second is Jordan playing Nekusar the Mind Razor. In his seven cards were a City of Brass, a Forbidden Orchard, a Blood Crypt, a Chain of Vapor, a Mana Vault, a Mental Misstep, and a Force of Negation. Going third is Nate, playing again Lord Windgrace. His opening hand contained a Swamp, a Wooded Foothills, a Twilight Mire, a Chromox, a Reanimate, a Dark Confidant, and a Phyrexian Arena. And finally going last is Joseph playing Niv-Mizzet Perun. His opening hand contained a Mountain, an Island, a Bloodstained Mire, a Winds of Change, a Negate, a Fell War Stone, and due to the London Mulligan, he puts a Narset's Reversal to the bottom of his library. Now with the opening hands out of the way, let's get into the gameplay for game number two. Starting off this second game, Adam draws and plays a tapped Temple of Silence as his land for turn, scrying one and keeping that card on top. He then gives the turn to Jordan. Jordan draws and plays an untapped Blood Crypt, losing two life. He then taps this Blood Crypt to cast a Mana Vault. With nothing left, he gives the turn to Nate. Nate draws and plays a Swamp as his land for turn. He then casts a Chrome Mox, which, when it enters the battlefield, he imprints Toxic Deluge to. He then taps for 2 mana to cast a Dark Confidant. With nothing left, he gives the turn to Joseph. Joseph draws and plays a Bloodstained Mire as his land for turn, immediately passing the turn to Adam. Adam untaps, draws, and plays a Swamp as his land for turn. He then taps for 2 mana to cast a Boros Signet. With nothing left, he gives the turn to Jordan. Jordan untaps, draws, and plays a City of Brass as his land for turn, and wanting to hold up a little bit of mana, gives the turn to Nate. Nate untaps, and in his upkeep, reveals a squandered resources to the Dark Confidant trigger, taking 2 damage. He then draws his card for turn, and plays a Twilight Mire as his land for turn. He then taps for 3 mana to cast a Phyrexian Arena. It resolves, and he then goes to combat, and swings his Dark Confidant at Jordan, dealing 2 damage. He then goes to pass the turn to Joseph. 
On Nate's end step, Joseph pays one life to crack his bloodstained mire to search up a tapped steam vents to the battlefield. Joseph then goes to his turn, untaps, draws, and plays an island as his land for turn. He then taps for two mana to cast a Felwar Stone. He then taps this Felwar Stone for a blue to cast of Serum Visions, drawing one card and then scrying two cards to the bottom. With nothing left, he gives the turn to Adam. Adam untaps, draws, and plays an Isolated Chapel as his land for turn. He then taps for two mana to cast a Talisman of Hierarchy. With nothing left, he passes to Jordan. Jordan untaps, draws, and plays a mountain as his land for turn. He then taps his mana to cast his commander, Nekusar the Mind Razor. With nothing left, he gives the turn to Nate. Nate untaps and, in his upkeep, draws a card from Phyrexian Arena, taking 1 damage from the arena and 1 damage from Nekusar, and then reveals a land off of the top of his library from Dark Confidant, not taking any damage. He then goes to his draw step and draws two cards and takes two more damage from Nekusar. He then plays a mountain as his land for turn, and then taps for two mana to cast a squandered resources. With nothing left, he gives the turn to Joseph. Joseph untaps and draws an additional card from Nekusar and takes two damage from the two card draws, and plays an island as his land for turn. He then taps for one mana to cast a Sensei's Divining Top. In response to this cast, Jordan pays two life to cast Mental Misstep, targeting the Sensei's Divining Top. In response to the misstep, really needing to get that card selection online, Joseph taps for two mana to cast a Negate, targeting the Mental Misstep. The Negate resolves, so the Sensei's Divining Top also resolves, and Joseph goes to pass the turn to Adam. On Joseph's end step, Adam taps for three mana to flash out an Avon Mind Sensor. He then goes to his turn, untaps, draws an additional card due to Nekosar, and takes two damage from the two card draws. He then plays a mountain as his land for turn, and then taps for two white mana to cast a Grand Abolisher. It resolves, and he then taps his mana to cast his commander, Queen Marchesa. When she enters, he becomes the monarch. He then goes to combat and swings his hasty commander and the Avon Mind Sensor at Nate, dealing five total damage. Adam then goes to his end step and draws a card due to being the monarch and loses one life from Nekusar. Jordan goes to his turn, untaps, draws, and plays a Forbidden Orchard as his land for turn. With nothing left, he passes the turn to Nate. Nate untaps and in his upkeep, in response to the Phyrexian Arena trigger, Jordan taps for 4 mana to flash out a Notion Thief, giving Joseph a 1-1 spirit from the Forbidden Orchard being tapped for mana. This Notion Thief resolves, and Jordan then draws Nate's Phyrexian Arena card, however Nate still takes the 1 damage. Nate's Dark Confidant then triggers, and he reveals a Lotus Petal off the top of his library, taking no damage. Nate then goes to his draw step and draws one card, taking a damage from Nekusar, and then Jordan draws a card due to Notion Thief stealing the second card draw from the draw step. Nate then goes to his turn and plays a Dunes of the Dead as his land for turn. Nate then taps Dunes of the Dead to float a colorless mana, and then sacrifices it to Squandered Resources to float another colorless mana, and when it hits the graveyard, he makes a 2-2 zombie. He then casts Lotus Petal for zero mana, and then taps his mana to cast his commander, Lord Windgrace. With nothing left, he goes to pass the turn to Joseph. On Nate's end step, Joseph pays one mana into his Sensei's Divining Top, rearranging the top three cards of his library. Joseph then goes to his turn, and he draws one card, taking one damage, and then Jordan steals the Nekusar draw. Joseph then plays a Mountain as his land for turn. Joseph then goes to combat and swings his 1-1 Spirit at Jordan, who blocks with Nekusar, and the Spirit then dies. Joseph then taps for 4 mana to cast a Rolling Earthquake with X equaling 3. Priorities get around, and not wanting to lose his commander, Jordan casts a Force of Negation, exiling Narset's Reversal so he can cast it without paying its mana cost. Rolling Earthquake is countered, and Joseph gives the turn to Adam. Adam untaps and, in his draw step, draws one card, taking a damage from Nekusar, and due to Notion Thief, Jordan draws the other card. He then goes to his first main phase and plays a Caves of Koilos as his land for turn. He then taps his mana to cast a Flayer of the Hatebound. It resolves, and he then goes to combat, swinging his creatures at Jordan, who declares no blockers, and takes 5 damage. 
Adam then goes to his end step, and since he is the monarch, Jordan draws a card due to Notion Thief. Jordan then goes to his turn, untaps, draws, and plays an Academy Ruins as his land for turn. He then taps for two mana to cast a Waste Knot. The Waste Knot resolves, and he then taps for three mana to cast a Wheel of Fortune. The Wheel of Fortune resolves, everybody discards their hand, and Jordan draws 28 cards due to having the Notion Thief. He draws an additional four cards from the Waste Knot, and then gets eight floating black mana and two 2-2 two, two zombies, also from the Waste Knot. He then uses two of this floating black mana to cast a Fell War Stone. He then for zero mana casts a Chrome Mox, imprinting Ristic Study when it enters. He then taps for two blue mana to cast a Thassa's Oracle, which resolves, and when it enters the battlefield, in response to the ETB trigger, he uses one of his floating black mana to cast a Demonic Consultation, exiling his library, and then the ETB trigger resolves, and Jordan wins the game. So this game was a little bit more one-sided, or there was a little less going on, a little less exciting, but with games that end on turn 5, sometimes that just happens, especially as the Niv-Mizzet player myself, going down to 6 cards really, really hurt. I knew I had to keep a lot of colors in order to get Niv-Mizzet off the ground, and there just wasn't enough time in the game. And that's one of the biggest drawbacks when you do go for some more flavor or some more sub-optimal picks. So I'm not saying that Niv-Mizzet is necessarily a bad commander, I do think he's very strong, but I think this game kind of showcased why specifically color combinations can really throw off an entire game plan. Only having access to two colors on Niv-Mizzet, while he does have technically a two card combo with a few different options to, to combo with, there's not a lot of ways to get those cards to, or tutor up those cards, so you're relying primarily on blue to control the game and draw out, with like red as a little splash color, and so you can essentially just naturally draw what you need. And while there are a few tutors that could get you what you need, like a Drift of Phantasms, they're just a little less frequent, and having only two colors and them being blue and red, and just missing another color really does hurt this kind of archetype and this kind of tier of power. Uh, so I just want to kind of to highlight that, just to, to show you that both of these games show you how these decks can be very powerful, but also some of the downsides of playing uh, some suboptimal commanders. And if it is something you like to see or something you like to play, let us know. We want to experiment, like I said, with this a little bit in Season 1. So we're going to continue the next four games at this power level. And then Season 3, we'll bump it back up just to keep the variety going. But that being said, that is all we have for you for this video. Hope you guys did enjoy the doubleheader, and I hope you're excited for Season 2. We have some exciting commanders and some different commanders, and I think you'll enjoy them. That being said, that is all we have for this video. I am Joseph, this is Casually Competitive MTG, and we will see you next time.